Hello my friends, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff and today for you, I'm gonna show you how I go about filming singer-songwriters. Now I know this video is called How to Film a Singer, but of course, this isn't the only way to do it. I'm, help I'm hoping this gives you ideas and that you find it just interesting and helpful. I filmed an unplugged studio video for rising folk star Jack Cookson. He's super talented. He played Glastow Festival this year in 2019, and it was just a really cool project. I shot the video at the amazing Axe and Trap Studios in Wells, and of course I want to say a special thank you to Ben and Alex for letting me do it. Everything I mention in this video is linked below, details of the studio, the artist, Jack, all the gear I used to film it, and of course the final music video which will be over on Jack's channel. So the space I had to film in was the studio's live room, which they've done a great job of getting it looking just amazing. Of course, if you've ever been to a studio, inevitably after a time, they start looking like music history museums and Axe and Trap is no exception. They've got interesting vintage gear all over the place. So the first thing I did was walk the room, just looking for anything that could be a distraction. And, and then I moved them to clear the space so it just looked more sort of nice and spacious. I then turned my attention to the lighting. The room has lots of different types of lights with different color temperatures, which actually looked kind of cool. But of course, ideally, for video, it's good, to just, it's good to control all aspects of the lighting. So I turned everything off so that I could set up my own lights and get it looking really amazing. In the background, you can see I've got blue and red fairy lights on the left and right walls, and then another set which are daylight colored on the floor. And what this does is create lots of little bokeh balls in the background, which I think look lovely, and just accentuate the depth of the shots. Next, I put up my key light. In this case, I used an Aperture C300 with a light dame for beautiful diffusion. I set it up to the left of our artist so that it would create a little bit of shade on the other side of his face. And it's also worth noting that I had to turn it down to its lower setting. If you've ever used this light, you'll know just how bright it is. The C300 is, it's a very flattering light and perfect for lighting a subject like this. I then set up two LED panels behind the artist. And again, I set the lights up on their minimum power. Anything else would have been just way too bright. The reason why I'm keeping all of my lights low is that I want a nice balance between our key light, backlights, and the fairy lights in the background. Some people would rather raise the backlights out of the shot so they're not visible. But personally, I love the look of having the lights visible because you get that sort of amazing silhouette on your subject and loads of kind of lens flare and that kind of thing. It just looks cool. Next, let's look at the angles I captured and the lenses I used. The first shot I captured was a safety shot, as I call it, the one that I can use if everything else goes wrong. And I used a Canon 35mm f2 IS lens. As you can see, I've got some gentle movement using a slider just gives it that kind of back and forth, nice bit of movement. Next, I wanted to get an alternative mid distance shot. So I slung on my Sigma 50 mm F1.4 art, which is a lovely lens. This meant I could get a little bit more background blur and it's a really nice sharp looking image. It just gave me an alternative to the original safety shot if I needed to cut for any reason. I then moved the camera back. I stayed with the same lens, the 50 mm and this shot was really just so I could have a bit more context, so I could see more of where Jack was sat and what the studio looked like, and it's nice, sharp, super detailed. Next, I wanted a close-up of Jack's face with some flair, so I put on my Canon 85mm f1.8, which is a nice, very cheap, very good value lens. I really did like the flair I got from this angle. You can see it cutting in and out from over his shoulder. Movement-wise in this shot, I just had the camera on the tripod with the fluid head loose, so I could just follow the natural movement of his head. And so I wanted even more detail, so I got a shot of him playing the guitar. And the one thing that was tricky with this is he does play the song differently every single time he plays it. <laughs> he's, he's just kind of, you know, improvisational like that. So during the editing phase, I had to cherry pick the moments where he was playing the same as in the recording and there were more than I expected, so I managed to get quite a few of these shots in the final edit. I'm using the same lens again, the Sigma 50mm, because it's lovely. 
I finished up by getting just an even closer shot of the solo section, as Jack calls it, just where he plays a little sort of extended bit on the guitar and it's pretty cool. It's just where he's not singing and I wanted to capture something interesting to look at whilst he's not singing. Movement wise, these shots are handheld because I wanted that sort of natural motion. And finally, I got a really close up of just one moment during the song where he does just a nice little harmonic thing on the guitar and I just wanted to highlight it in the final cut. So I got this. So once I've captured all the footage I needed, I got it into Final Cut and here is how I edited and graded it to get it to the final video. So in our editing software, I took all the clips and synced them all to the master track using the multicam function in Final Cut Pro. Definitely check out my video about multicam if you want to know more about how to use it. And I've added an adjustment layer over the whole thing so I can add my effects and it will affect the whole video. You can see my chain of plugins I'm using. I'm using color wheels, color curves, a lookup table, a second lookup table, a letterbox, and then a vignette. The first thing I'm gonna do is to turn on my lookup table and see where we stand. This to me looks pretty good, but I know I can get it looking better. So in my color wheels, I'm just gonna bring the exposure down a tiny bit and the saturation down a little bit. I'm going to nudge my shadows a tiny bit into that sort of turquoisey blue and that's it. I also nudged my colour temperature so it's slightly cooler as well, you'll see why in a bit. Next I added an instance of colour curves which I did just a gentle massage of the contrast curve but I think you'll agree when I turn all of it on it makes a surprising difference. It just adds a nice little bit of grit and detail to the skin tones and just more contrast where I wanted it to be. I know what you're thinking, I've already got a lookup table applied, why on earth will I apply a second one? Well, all I'm doing with this is I'm adding 8% of a different lookup table, and it's the ice blue lookup table from Phantom, and it just adds a really nice quality to the blues, it makes them slightly deeper, and I like what it does to the skin tones as well. I toyed with the idea of adding a letterbox to make the video seem a little bit more cinematic, but in the end I thought, well, I probably should have shot the whole thing a little bit more wide, so I've got more room on the top and bottom, so I didn't use a letterbox. Finally, I just added a vignette, just a little bit. I made sure there was no blur around the edges, which is the default setting in this plugin and I didn't go as heavy as I have done in the past, just a little bit, and it really sort of just helps to focus the eye into the center of the frame. So here you can see the before and after, and really it boils down to a nice place to film, some good lighting, a good lookup table, and really just a good song. Please make sure you click through to see the full video on Jack's channel, it's worth it, it's a really great song. And that's it for now. I hope you found this interesting, helpful, and informative. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about video on this channel of which YouTube recommends this one for you, and the one below will be my latest video. If you're not already subscribed, definitely do it. Hit the blob, it'll just be over this side. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.